Okay, hello everyone. My name is Simon, and uh, I guess this is a test episode of my architecture tour of Half-Life 2. This is, of course, Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, as you can see. It's a technology demo uh, for Half-Life. Before Half-Life came out, basically they made this to show people some of the technologies that will be in the game. And uh, it's got some interesting architecture here. It's got a little monastery on top of a cliff. So uh, let's have a look at that. And we'll see how this goes. Yes, like I said, this is going to be a, a test run for the actual series, which will be a playthrough of Half-Life 2, while I talk about the architecture of it. Which... I don't know if you think that sounds interesting or not, but I uh, am quite confident it'll be very good. Anyway, so we start off here at the base of a cliff. A town to the right and some industrial things to the left. I don't know what those industrial things actually are. That looks like a, an incinerator. Those look like, I don't know, are those cement? mixes or factories, I don't know what those are, but as we if we look down at them from up there you'll see that they don't actually form a factory of any sort, they just look like industrial things from here. Anyway, let's move on. Hey. Hey. You there? Yes. Wait a minute now, aren't you Yes. Uh, you are. You're that scientist chap, a freedman, fishman. Am I right? Uh Simon You must be here to take on the combine. Not sure what one man can do, but no other reason to visit St. Olga at a time like this. Sure. I'll take you to where they made their base, or as far as I can, at any rate. Okay, go. Thanks. So this is St. Olga, as he says. It's a town, the town of St. Olga, and the f monastery of St. Olga. I don't know if it's... I don't know which part is St. Olga. Maybe they're both St. Olga. Who knows? Here, now, let me just unlock this gate for you. Sure, thanks. I've got the key right, right here. Uh, let's see. There we go. Shotgun. Get along now, laddie. Des destroy that gun and no dawdling. All right. Well, I think Half Life is somewhere in. Now, laddie. Destroy that gun all right, and all right, no all right. dawdling. Somewhere in eastern, northeastern Europe, around the Baltic. I think that's where we're supposed to be. It's never very specifically said. So, uh, there's a monastery up there. I guess I'll point this out right at the start. This cliff is not actually very tall. Nor is the monastery very big. I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying that in comparison to real life. Okay, that's all just there. In comparison to real life, and this is going to be a major theme throughout the entire series, is that in the game world, things are usually compressed. The main reason being that, you know, real world is actually quite big. And if you maintain real world sizes in games, what you end up doing is spend a lot of time walking around not doing very much. And that, that obviously is not very good for gameplay. So what most computer games do is the... They'll compress the space in the game. So the the mountains are smaller, the roads are shorter, the buildings are smaller, and so on. And they'll, they'll try to do it in a, in a way that's not very obvious. But, you know, after... Okay, we're kind of in a war zone here, but anyway. But, as you consider, you know, this place, we can walk from the base of the cliff 
up to the monastery in literally less than five minutes. Now imagine in the real life how far you can walk in five minutes. It's not very really far at all. You might not even get out your front door. I mean, if you take five minutes. So, that's what I mean when I say space is compressed. It's so that you don't spend so much time wandering around. And you spend more time doing this sort of stuff. Which is the game stuff, right? Like shooting people. Yeah. So that's one thing to keep in mind and I won't say too much of that because you know it'll be everywhere in the games and there's no point repeating it over and over Who is it going? anyway we'll move up we'll uh, we are playing on easy easy difficulty by the way because I want to be talking, I don't want to have to pay too much attention to the fighting. Anyway, there's not too much architecture yet. Mostly we're just making our way up the cliff. Just get rid of this guy. Where is he? Oh, secret. Anyway. So you see like how how fast we're kind of running up this cliff, which is completely unrealistic. And how quickly we make it to the top. Anyway, the cliff is kind of narrow here. What are we doing? Sort of killing these guys? Sure. Also, monasteries... Often monasteries are put in out-of-the-way places because, you know, they're... religious places for monks. And monks try to kind of be secluded from, from the rest of the world. So you see this kind of staircase that was supposed to come up here and then the wooden one's been destroyed but it came up this way and this is where it gets a bit weird because the path doesn't really continue like this is very very narrow and then you know what's the point of building an actual structure that's you know safe to walk there and then having this a little bit which is completely unsafe. So that's a bit strange. I think that's a well I mean you see that, so I guess maybe we can say that there used to be a path here but it fell apart, but I don't know, that that seems a little bit odd to me. So I think like that staircase should continue up to the top, but that's alright. So monasteries, like I said, they're often secluded from the rest of the world. And this entrance way certainly you know, it's it's modest, it's humble. If you imagine you know, it's not like it's not a grand entrance, it's a very small entrance. I guess it depends what type of monks you are. I'm not a religious person, so I don't really know. And you know, one thing I, I really appreciate about Valve is the attention to detail. Things like downpipes and, and, and gutters. You now gutters, you, you might not think they're important, but as someone with some architecture training, you, know, you notice these things. And the fact that they've bothered to put them in, you know, it speaks of their attention to detail. And look at all, all of this. And obviously this is based on something 
they found in the real world. They probably have had photos of monasteries to work from. They might have actually gone and visit some of them. But you know, you you can't just make this sort of detail up in your head. Research is what's that line? That's a glitch. You know, research is very important. And to say a bit about Valve's design, their approach design, they do a lot of research and they do a lot of testing. And that I think is, is the basis of how their work is so good. That's really odd on the cross here, you see? Anyway. Yeah. Research and testing. So this is, I guess, the, the main feature here. We walk